Hi, my name is Steve Sewell, and today I'm going to talk to you about how Everlane delivers high-speed personalization at scale on their Jamstack site. Just a little bit of background on me. Previously, I led web engineering at a company called ShopStyle. ShopStyle is a very cool product. They crawl all the different merchants' websites and allow you to search, compare, and browse right in one place. But what's even cooler, at least for me, is we were doing Jamstack at scale with personalization all the way back in 2014, where we needed high speed, high flexibility, and we wanted to be on the latest up and coming technology. In that process, we learned a lot, and I'm excited to see how much more adopted Jamstack is today. And I wanted to come and share with you a lot of our learnings from that time and also working with customers of our platform like Everlane to show you how specifically today, Everlane uses a lot of techniques that we've learned over time to deliver such rich experiences at large scale. Uh, currently, I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Builder.io. One of our biggest learnings was when having a Jamstack site, especially for e-commerce, marketers need to be able to create new content and modify content all the time. And having engineers always in the way and filling up engineering backlogs caused strain on everybody. So we created a headless CMS, API-driven, everything you're used to, but with a rich no-code interface where you can register your React or Vue or whatever components and drag and drop them in the visual editor to publish new, interesting, amazing, bespoke content um, on any site or stack, but particularly well-fitted for Jamstack. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but a lot of the techniques that we use and that we work with Everlane on can be done at least in part with any headless CMS and any site structure. So I hope the learnings are very relevant for you regardless. And so more recently, we worked very closely with Everlane as an early customer of our platform to make sure we sort of built and refined everything for their needs. So this is where we're gonna to focus today on exactly what Everlane does to solve problems around needing high performance Jamstack personalization on their e-commerce website. We'll cover a number of techniques that they use. And again, you can use with any headless CMS and we offer them a lot of out of the box as well. So first let's talk about Everlane stack. They use React and Next.js on the front end. And if you don't already know, Everlane was a very early adopter of Jamstack as well. They have been doing Jamstack on, and using React on their website for a very, very long time. And I think as of today, the desktop site is sort of a pure React and the mobile site is using Next.js for static generation. They use Builder as their headless CMS. We'll talk about some cool things we offer there. But again, these techniques you can do at least in part with any headless CMS. And so we'll keep the talk abstract so you can understand how you can use this for your needs with any setup you have or that you like. And then in their case, Everlane uses a homegrown e-commerce platform, as in custom built by them in-house. Very, very cool stuff. And again, you can use this. Um, all of the topics of this talk on any e-commerce platform, ones that are known big names or something custom that you have in-house or even none at all, just making rich um, shoppable content that you link to other places for people to purchase. So let's cover the problem. Traditional solutions to personalization are slow and the point of Jamstack is being fast. So let's talk about how people have solved these problems historically and why they don't work well for modern needs, especially for high speed um, mobile websites. And let's talk a little bit about sort of like what you can do about it in the lens of Jamstack. So traditionally personalization was done on servers. So as opposed to the Jamstack mindset where you statically pre-generate content and deliver it from the edge, so geographically very close, so very, very fast response times, Server-side personalization would mean actually having to send your request all the way around the world to wherever an origin server lives. The origin server then has to make sure it has enough, you know, uh, uh, compute and still to be able to process that request, pull data, hopefully it's cached, maybe it's not, assemble the nice, perfect personalized page for you, and then spit it back and send it all the way around the world again back to you. This can take a very long time. This can even take multiple seconds for a full page load. And this is what we're trying to avoid with Jamstack because we know in e-commerce that those seconds cost you conversions, significant conversions. Users bounce, users are disappointed. They just leave and don't come back. So we need speed, but we we still want to personalize this content. We don't want to show everyone the same generic content. So then comes in blocking JavaScript. There are tools out there where you can add, you know, it seems so easy, add one line of code. Well, it's one blocking JavaScript tag that as it's downloading a whole horde of content that may be injected into your page, 
your users or your visitors are not able to see your page. So it still is perceived as a very, very slow load time. They can't even see the initial content while this blocking JavaScript is pulling down things that might want to inject into the page to change content. Usually these blocking JavaScript strategies are limited in what you can do. You can probably do a line here or like a little image difference there. But for modern needs, you usually want to do significant things, merchandise pages, show whole grids of products for different people who had different sort of shopping behaviors. And the blocking JavaScript just doesn't cut it for today's performance needs. Now, of course, behold Jamstack, it solves those performance problems. You deliver content instantly from the edge. There's no server assembling it on the fly. It's pre-generated, it's crazy fast, but Everybody sees the same exact content. And we're not trying to show people who only buy men's products, women's products, and vice versa. We're trying to personalize deals. We're trying to really merchandise and show what you should be buying based off the fact that we know you are you. You're not just a generic faceless person. And so again, we come back to this problem of we need a solution that's not either or, fast or personalized. We want both. And so let's talk about solutions to this problem. So first solution here is delivering high-speed optimization with a combination of static and dynamic rendering. So what do I mean by this? What I mean is you don't have to pre-generate your entire page. And frameworks like Next.js and Gatsby and others have facets built in so that you can have some content fetch and load only in the browser. In the example here, we're using an extreme example, and then we'll show you some more minimal examples that are less noticeable. But in the extreme example, like Everlane's homepage, you get the Chrome of the page instantly. So still the perceived load time is very, very fast. And this is a technique used by other companies like Facebook to show, as you can see, placeholder content before we load the next set of more personalized content. So you see the black bar at the top is empty with no text, but keep in mind, we preserve that space so that when the personalized content comes in after the fact, we're not kind of popping the screen around and things are coming into place. We're also rendering sort of placeholder imagery here so that you can see that content's about to come in and you can see the format of it before it does. But once that placeholder lands, which is almost instantaneous, way below a second, then we can make a subsequent request based off of information that's unique to the visitor. So we may have stored information in the browser via cookies or local storage about like, are they a returning visitor, right? Have we seen this person before? Do they previously shop certain categories? Do they purchase men's products or women's? Do they like sneakers or do they like, you know, hats? And then we can send anything else we want. Is this a mobile device versus a desktop? Um, what is in the cart, and so maybe we should show products related or complementary to the cart products, all kinds of things. And so what you see is now different visitors are seeing different content, both at the top, you'll see in one case, Everlane's promote, promoting new swimwear to women or to men shoppers, they're promoting new sportswear. Um, in the hero and every other piece of content, we're showing unique content for that visitor that we know will convert a whole lot better than showing generic content. This technique can be used for obviously more than just a full page. These blue boxes represent very common practices we see uh, customers of Builder use and use generally in e-commerce, right? So for home pages and landing pages, you might want to personalize the whole thing or to minimize the perceived noticeable impact of the second stage of rendering. Some people might render just above the fold, maybe not personalized, but faster and static. So another approach to the home page would be to load sort of the um, navigation and logo at the top and then load the hero, maybe the same for everyone and everything below the fold is unique and personalized. It's up to you how you wanna strike the balance between you know what is going to be just ridiculously fast and what will be just a hair second coming in after the fact, but far more conversion optimized because of relevance to the given visitor. We see people do this on collection pages. Generally, collection pages have a nice sort of introductory hero to the collection at the top. You might use that space to talk about the type of collection. This is, you know, the Everlane sneakers, or you might even decide to take that over for a promotion. Like actually on Black Friday, we're gonna wipe out the normal content and show something more interesting. Certain things can be targeted but pre-rendered, such as if every collection, if every sneaker page always has the same hero, we can pre-render that, versus in some of these other examples, like let's look at the next one, the cart promotion, we might never pre-render that because it doesn't even show until the user clicks on the cart icon and has it come in anyway. So that's where we can always render this dynamically, and then we can get even more interesting by showing, and we'll describe how these techniques are implemented in a moment too, 
we can show different sort of uh, promotions in the cart related to what's in the cart. Maybe there's nothing in the cart, so we're gonna show a promotion that says, hey, add $100 worth of items, you'll get free shipping or some other discounts. Maybe you have $100 worth of items and they're all sneakers, and maybe you previously shopped women's products. So let's recommend women's denim. Maybe we'll recommend different tops that we think would be a good fit for this visitor, all controlled in your CMS, which we'll show in a moment. Product pages, it's becoming very popular to to um, personalize the product pages, like the products that you show to recommend with a certain product or a certain product type. Um, and again, very, very similar setup, right? If you're browsing sneakers, which are gender neutral, but you previously purchased men's products, then maybe we'll recommend men's denim to go with the sneakers. And sometimes we might add, and we're seeing a very popular trend around editorializing product pages, throwing content below the sort of generic product information that's critical, but to talk about the story, the materials, the manufacturing, um, all of those things. Uh, sustainability is a really good one to fit there too and very fitting to Everlane as well. We talked about announcement bars, and you can even do the same techniques with just pure data. It doesn't have to be whole drag and drop or otherwise editable section templates, navigation links, and other pieces of data. You can use these same techniques, and these are some of the very common patterns that we see. Another technique that's really, really interesting that Builder implements automatically, but that you can sort of take note of, is statically generated A-B testing. So, as I mentioned before, there are ways to show a page as having part of the page being a placeholder and then load just in the browser the additional content and render that in place. But that doesn't have to be the case, actually. You can make it so that you actually pre-generate the entire page and it loads instantly, but different visitors see different content. And how we do this with Builder, and you can do manually as well, hooked up to another CMS or just hand-rolled, is actually to use a code snippet like below. What Builder does when we generate static code is we always print the default variation in just normal you know, HTML content, hydratable by React or your framework of choice. Then we add a template tag that has any other variation and then a little inline script, so nothing to download, nothing blocking, no performance hit besides maybe a fraction of a millisecond to execute a minor amount of JavaScript. We roll a dice or check if you're already placed in a test group and make one tiny DOM manipulation to say, actually, we don't want the default content. We want the content of this template. And then now you actually have a statically generated lightning fast page that based on who's opening the page, different people actually see different content. It's pretty amazing. And then you can track this either in Builder or another system to say, okay, here's who viewed what content and here's how much of a conversion difference that it made. Um, prior to techniques like this, most sort of tools and efforts fell into something we call the conversion paradox, meaning in order to try and optimize for conversions and make more revenue off of your visitors, really by showing them better content that's more relevant or, or more actionable, instead you load up with these tools that actually hurt your performance so much that you reduce conversions for everyone because people are now browsing a very slow site. So using techniques like this that, again, Builder generates for you and you can implement yourself in a very simple, straightforward way, you can actually show personalized pages without a performance hit. And I'll summarize one other thing. If you're thinking, well, what if I have a lot of variations or a lot of content, wouldn't that make the HTML larger? No, actually, because of gzipping. So gzipping uh, deflation algorithms remove uh, redundancy, you know, things that are repeated across a piece of content. In a lot of cases, A-B tested variations are very duplicative. They just have little minor differences. So whereas you might have two, three versions of a page printed into one static HTML, once gzipped and sent over the wire, it might only be 10% larger of a payload. Way, way, way less a performance hit than any other technique that we've seen to date. And it's very, very exciting stuff. So next, how do you create all this content? You need to create all these versions of everything, set up tests, decide, you know, this should have targeted content. Well, you can do that in your CMS. Builder offers a very cool technique out of the box where we actually have a targeting, scheduling, and A-B test system built in. So then you can just define the parameters you know about a visitor, create your content with our drag and drop editor, piece it together, decide who should see it, and hit publish. But using things like custom fields in any headless CMS, you can implement something very similar with just only small differences and limitations where you can still decide that certain variations of content, variations of your homepage have like a special fields to pick for, okay, this should be the previously shopped men's or women's or by locale or techniques like that. And then in the browser, you just send those as queries 
Every CMS has a slightly different operator syntax for how you say, oh, we want to query if there's a men's homepage show that, if not, you know, just show whatever's the default. And overall, that means that your content editors can make many variations, publish them all, and then using clever queries or just builder's optimization system, different visitors can see different content based on what is actually relevant to them. It's very exciting. And then when you add a layer on top of that, like our drag and drop editor, then your marketers or non-developers can make many, many permutations and test a wide variety of things, not even being locked into templates. But even within templates, there's still really useful learning and it still saves you, the developer, from having to go in and add to your developer backlog, adding a button or whatever else a marketing team might need. So let's talk about the results. High-speed optimization at scale is definitely a very, very powerful thing. Dynamic personalization combined with statically generated A-B testing and combined with merchandising and other techniques can mean a whole lot of speed improvements and conversion improvements for an e-commerce business. Dynamic personalization is definitely one of the key topics of this whole conversation. And Everlane last holiday season published 100 optimization, optimized versions of their homepage in just one month. These were targeted at different audiences. These are scheduled for specific dates, you know, maybe leading into Black Friday, during Black Friday, during Cyber Monday, afterward sales, so many, and all published in advance, optimized and everything using this techniques. Variations were shown to customers off of sort of the uh, examples that I gave previously, such as new versus returning visitors, items in the cart, browsing and purchasing behavior, and site updates for Everlane were 32 times faster. I think you can definitely get a certain multiple of this just by using these techniques with any headless CMS, and consider using Builder or something similar if you could find it that can give a full drag and drop editor with your components such that you can even move faster and not be hammering on developer backlogs for small changes to lay out a button here or any sort of nuance that's needed for a new test or a new campaign. Statically generated A-B test preserves this high performance and allows you to always serve static pages, the full page static, and measure conversions on everything. Builder, for instance, we built a system built in where you can track conversions and just see the exact dollar value or conversion rate of any piece of content that you've created. So you can rapidly whip up content, no developers needed, and then view the results. And then developers, this just means that you don't have a big backlog of marketing needs anymore, and you can set permissions and constraints so that if you maybe are a developer or designer, you get a little bit of extra drag and drop flexibility, or if you're an editor or other roles that you define, you have to stay within the lines. It's completely in your control to have a very sort of like tight, rigid design system or a very flexible system. And of course, merchandising, right? Creating all these new experiences means uh, campaigns launch, like product launches four times faster. Um, you can merchandise sections around your entire websites like Everlane did, and you can make completely bespoke experiences. If you haven't seen it, you should check out Everlane's denim page. It's incredible. It's created completely from scratch by their uh, design and marketing team. No developers were involved to my knowledge besides making a couple React components for interactivity. And it's very exciting to see that now for once, instead of having sort of constraints, your website being this black box, you know, or very, very limited editability for non-developers, you can actually make your website as bespoke and stunning and beautiful as you do in other places, like launch a social media campaign with stunning content, Instagram stories, etc., where you can swipe up and see equally stunning content, not the same page that you've seen a hundred times just with a different product in the boxes, but very, very unique bespoke content. It's really cool and you should really check out this page and everything else Everlane does, frankly. In conclusion, I hope I shared with you some exciting techniques that you can make use of to personalize your Jamstack site at speed and at scale, both for the non-developers to create and optimize and test content and for developers to have what they need. If I haven't already mentioned, Builder has all of these things built in. You don't even have to think about it. Just plug it into your Jamstack site and rock and roll. And uh, please check us out, DM me, send me messages. I'm happy to tell you all about it. And many of these things you can implement in your own system as needed as well to get at least some of this benefit. And that's everything. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm Steve8708. Uh, message me if you like. And uh, thank you so much for coming to this talk.